grace that God has given me, we are made for signs and wonders. you put your hand together for Jesus. I said put your hand together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your right hand this morning. Holy Spirit we surrender to you. Holy Spirit, you are in charge. Holy Spirit, it was with you God created heaven and hell. Holy Spirit, you were the bread that brought everything about. Holy Spirit, do your work this morning and glorify Christ. Touch every heart. From the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet. Let the weak be made strong. Let the bomb be loose. Let the sick be healed. Set God's people free and put them on track for the work of the ministry. Thank you for victory this morning. Bless the people of God with your power and anointing. I will give you glory and honor for what we expect you to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Give the Lord a big shout of hallelujah. I say give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. Amen. Be seated. Thank God for victory. I say thank God for victory. I say thank God for victory. From the first time I stepped here some years ago, I saw in the life of Dr. Gary Weston and Pastor Faith a determination to do something for the kingdom of God. And our relationship has been on two principal things. Number one, to affect our generation. I said in Florida yesterday, no matter what you do in your life, if you leave this world the way you met it, it was better you didn't come. I want to repeat. God did not say anybody is born by mistake. But everyone is born with right and born with power and born with anointing. But Jesus says, some who come to this world and do nothing for God and do nothing for their generation, it was better a millstone is tied to their neck and they are dropped to the sea than to waste God's own time. I thank God. Whenever I'm in Delaware, two things I ask Pastor Gary Weston, where have you been recently? And where are you going next? A man that is not coming and going is a stale man. And when you stand too much still, life pass you by. You didn't hear me. If you stay too long in one place, life pass you by. Tell me what I said. I didn't hear you. Try it one more time. Now, how many of you know the meaning of that? How many of you know that if you are not moving forward, you are moving backward? And so this morning I asked him, Where are you coming from? And he said, I just came in. Where are you going? And he said, I'm traveling on Monday, Tuesday. That's all that I live for now. I did my best for 32 years to be a founder of ministries. 
help her to establish ministries of all kinds. I told Pastor Faye just now, I said, I wish every evangelist have a church. Because if you have no church, when you now become so old, you can no more go. It will look as if you did nothing when you were walking. Did you hear me? I'm grateful to God. I'm here this morning. God brought me to take you to a new level. Tell someone new level. Say to your neighbor, new level. So I'm not going to run from the beginning of the stage to the other end as I used to do when I was 50 years old. I'm not going to jump up and down as I used to do when I was 55. I'm now stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. <sighs> Say with me, I can do all things, can do all things. Through, Christ through Christ that's not, not me. I can do all things, do all things. through Christ. That's net net me. I can do all things with the power of God that raised me up. Somebody say amen. amen. Follow me to the book of Matthew this morning. Matthew 17. Matthew 17, verse 14. When they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Can you use the word with me? Kneeling down and saying, Picture within your brain and your mind someone stand before you. And all of a sudden, and from that stage, he begins to speak. Say what? Look at what he says in the next verse. Saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he's lunatic and so vexed. For often times he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy spirit disciples and they could not cure him then Jesus answered and said oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you bring him to me you know for several years, many, 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 many preachers displayed the hand of God in action. They displayed the hand of God in demonstration. And if you were to ask me privately this morning, what stage are we now in the area of the ministry of Jesus on earth? If you were to ask me private question, this is what I will tell you. It's your turn. You didn't hear me. I said you didn't hear me. Time of begging preacher to pray for you. It's getting over. You didn't hear me. Everyone here today is qualified to do the work of the ministry. I brought him to your disciples. They could not cure him. But have mercy on me. And Jesus said, bring him to me. Bring him to me. What type of man is Jesus asking to come? Look at his name, his profession, his life. Number one, lunatic. Number two, so vexed. Number three, look at it. Are you with me? Fall it into fire. Number four, into water. 
Jesus says, bring him. You didn't hear me. The man lunatic, bring him. The man vexed with demons, bring him. The sick that disciples could not cure, bring him. Bring him for what? Question. Church, bring him for what? Everybody is quiet. You are in the, the Bible church. Bring him for what? I didn't hear you. Stand up quickly. Bring him for what? Bring him for what? Let us see whether that's what Jesus said. Oh, Lord God. Look at verse. Pastor Faith, this will help you and me. Jesus rebuked the devil. And he, the devil, departed out of what? Him. And the child was cured from when? Please remain standing for a few minutes with me. I don't pastor a sleeping church. I pastor a living church, and this is one of the churches that is a living church in America. If we can no more cure the sick, the door should be closed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If the church can no more pray for the vexed, the lunatic, the fallen, the dying to be cured, shut the door. But thank God for Jesus who said, bring him to me. I said, thank God for Jesus who said, bring him to me. I don't know any church today in this town where the pastor said, today is lunatic's day. You didn't hear me. I don't know any church today in Washington where the shepherd will say, this day is dedicated for the lunatics. Do you know how many of us we run? When the pastor, they bring all the lunatic to the altar. Oh God. I know what I'm after this morning. We are soon going to get there so that you can know what to do tomorrow. Look at the 20, the 19th verse. Then came the disciple to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Jesus said unto them, not because you didn't come to church, not because you didn't pay your tithe, not because you were not speaking in tongue, but because of your what? Why are many things going wrong? Do you know the good news? Unbelief is a belief. But has on in the back. There's a belief in the front. There's on at the back. If you will take the on away, what will you find? Believe. Sit down. They were sincere enough to ask him, why could we not cast him out? Nine men, one devil. You didn't hear me. Nine men, one devil. Why could we not stand a him? Hear me. I've been in that room for one hour. Listening to your praise and worship and singing and dancing. There are few churches in America that do what you do. 
Very few. Very few. So many churches on edge today, not just America, they are there for ceremony. But thank God for a church with power. For several years, I taught each one of us, we are men and women, that God is training for lengthening ceremony. Until I read this scripture. Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing. Point your hand to your chest and me. Jesus is telling me nothing shall be impossible. Unto me. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor. The Lord asked me to tell you. Nothing. Shall. Be. Impossible. To you. To you. To you, to you, to you, to you, to you. I believe in my heart that the man we are expecting to hear from Jesus, the reason you could not cure him is because hear me. Why could we not cure him? Because you were not in church last week. Why could we not cure him? Because you didn't pay tithe. Why could we not cure him? What has troubled me most in this scripture is we. You didn't hear what I said. And Jesus said, the business of faith is not a we, but you. Verily I say unto who? Verily I say unto who? You. If you have faith... As a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible. Was there anything you ever thought in your life could not be done? Tell me the truth. Is there anything you ever thought in life you could not do? Not from today. I said not from today. From today Jesus says nothing. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. The story he told you just now about Maduguri, he said it so lightly, he said it so cheap, because it's over. Maduguri, Nigeria, is the place Islam came from Saudi Arabia to enter Nigeria. Alright? You have seen that man before? Who do you think is pointing his finger there? Who is this man? 
You think that, Pastor Gary? All right. My Duguri, a denomination had been there for 40 years before 11 years ago with nine converts. Nine for 40 years. The head of the organization told me they yeah, spent over $15 million for nine converts. 11 years ago, I went to Maduguri. God opened the door. This time, when we asked for pastors to come, there were 64 pastors. Who were saved 11 years ago, now in the ministry. And with what we saw last month, Five years from now, Pastor Gary had, when we ask every pastor, what were you before a Muslim? What were you before a Muslim? What were you before a Muslim? No man dare say that in Maduguri. They cut your throat. Because you can never be a former Muslim. If you are a former Muslim, you are a former dad. But what has happened? 103 churches now in Maduguri. There is no door closed that God cannot open. There's no way too dark that God cannot give you his light. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Look at this verse. Whew. Verse. Verse 17. One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, who had a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he cheered him. And he foamed and gnashed with his teeth, and pinned away. And I spake unto thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 20. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straight with the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground. And while he was foaming, and he asked his father, How long is this a go since this came on him? He said of a child. Verse 22. And oftentimes it had cast him into fire. And oftentimes into water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have mercy and compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that does what? There is power in your belief. Look at me, please. I didn't come to tickle you. I didn't come to shake you. I come to establish you in one thing. What is the reason things you want to happen are not happening? Not because you are not a Christian. Not because you don't pray. Not because you don't go to church. Not because you don't pay tight. Jesus says, if only you believe. You are not hearing what I'm saying this morning. What is my problem? What is my trouble? My unbelief. Where God wants me to believe. Are you hearing me? Why am I down 
instead of going up, my own belief. Why is there no money in my pocket when I needed money to pay my bill? Not because God is no more supplying all my needs, but because of my own belief. Somebody didn't hear me this morning. A few years ago, I was at Los Angeles Airport, about to fly to Sydney for a crusade at the Olympic Stadium. Suddenly at the lobby, a flash of light came to my eyes. And the Lord said to me, you are going to build a stadium church in Benin. I looked up. I said, what? I told my wife, I said, excuse me, are you seeing what I'm seeing? She said, what's that? I said, it's not on the wall, it's on top. So she raised her head up and said, what is that? I said, I see a building. Three floors, a dome, high, taking thousands of people. And the Lord said, we are going to put it in Benin. She said, check again. <laughs> so I raised my head up and I looked. And I heard the Lord say, if only you will believe, it can be done. The first thing that came to my mind was how much do we have in our account? $504. How much would the building cost? Millions. In Africa, you don't hold plastic money because nobody will sell anything for you. In Africa, when you say this is my car, it means you have paid. In Africa, when you say this is my dress, it means you paid for it. Nobody give you credit facility. So what do I need? God. So I say, honey, I think we better bind the devil. She said, you can bind him, but God has said so. As I began to think and we are flying, she said, you look very worried. I said, I am. She said, why are you worried? I said, because God never tell me anything. And he doesn't give me time to finish it. She said, what have you ever done before that you have money for? Oh God, who is making this mistake? Who made this mistake to put this picture on? Oh Lord God, that's the right thing to do. She said, believe. God can do it. We laid the foundation and in 30 months, I said in 30 months, it finished. <laughs> if thou canst believe, All things, all things, all things, all things, all things. Now, if I say something, begin to say possible healing, possible. deliverance, possible. blessing, possible. prosperity. Possible. If thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that does what? Believe. My biggest fear as a preacher was how to do the impossible. What God has said to me is all is possible. 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 All things are possible. How do I become a possibilitarian?
Mark chapter 11. Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Look at verse 21. Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which you cursed is withered. Jesus said unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. Look at me, everybody. Do you have a belief this morning? Yes. Please respond to me. Do you have a belief this morning? Yes. I'm not talking to people on evangelistic ground. I'm talking to you at the church. Yes. Evangelistic ground is to stir you up and pray for you. What I'm doing for you this morning is to take you out to put you in. Yes. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. Yes. Because the biggest trouble we have in the church is church people behaving like babies. Why is it that every crusade ground is full of church people? And the church is less people. Because church people go to crusade as beggars. If you... Don't get me wrong. Pastor Gary, come. If Pastor Gary hears that Dr. Maurice Arulo is coming to town for crusade, He's not going there for healing. You didn't hear me. Pastor Faye will not go there for healing. You know why? If God cannot heal them here, he cannot heal them there. You better listen to me. Say new level. New level. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Jesus said, if you have faith as a whosoever, a whosoever shall say whatsoever. <laughs> A whosoever shall say whatsoever and shall have whatsoever. Is anybody with me this morning? Psalm 106, Psalm 105, Psalm 106, Psalm 107 said, there was not one feeble man among them. Did somebody hear what I'm saying this morning? Every lunatic is permitted to come to the church. Amen. But it's not permitted to go by a lunatic. Yeah. Whosoever, whosoever shall say, Is somebody there this morning? It is not whether we are here. Yeah. It is whether we are saying. That's right, Mama. That's right. What do you say with your mouth when there is no money in your pocket? What do you say? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen to this man. What do you say when your body feels as if you are not well? He has every answer for everything I ask. <laughs> what do you say when the cloud is taken over from the sun the day you need sun? Joshua said, sun stand still. 
What do you say when you are in a hurry and if I Jordan block your way? What do you say when there is Pharaoh's army in your back and Red Sea in your front? The word of God will say to you, Pastor Gary, go forward. What do you do to your Red Sea? Take your mantle. Open your mouth. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and shall not doubt in his heart. He shall have whatsoever he saith. How many of you were here on Thursday when Pastor Duncan William came here? Raise your hand up. Were you here on Thursday? Did you hear his message? Yes. When Duncan William, Dr. William came to Nigeria 18 years ago, he could not pronounce his name in English. He couldn't speak one English. On the day of examination, he was asked question. He spoke in tongue. I said, when you finish your tongue, tell me what was said. 19 years later, every part of the world that Duncan William go, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is now in that man. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Where you are is not as important as where you are going. Where you are coming from should not disturb you from what God wants to do with you now. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Whosoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, you don't need to become Gary Weston. Your title does not need to become Archbishop. What God is asking you this morning is, where is your belief in the church? Because if thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Whosoever. You are qualified. Say, I'm qualified. Shall say, say, I'm qualified. To this mountain, say, I will say it. Mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea. Did you hear what Jesus said? Don't just tell the mountain to move. Tell the mountain where to go. And what did Jesus say to the sea? Because if you cast it on the back of your house, when you wake up tomorrow morning, the mountain is still there. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? If you cast it on the side of the street, if you drive out, the mountain will still be there. But if you shall cast it to the sea, the ocean will flow it away. Don't only identify your trouble. Tell your trouble when it shall end. I shall not doubt. Not in the church. Not in your house, no doubt. but in your heart. No doubt. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? There are many things you would have done already in your life. But you are not saying anything. When sickness tries to take over your body, you say it's okay. Whosoever 
ever shall say to this mountain, not whosoever shall nod his head. Your mountain needs to hear something from God. Verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever, oh, I wish you heard what I'm saying, ye desire, when you pray, believe that you shall receive them and ye shall have them when do i stop being a beggar for miracle to a receiver of miracle when not only i pray when i begin to say with my mouth is anybody with me this morning come on ezekiel chapter 37 Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. What to do when things are not going the way you want them to go? Is anybody there with me? Verse 1. Read it in American English. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of dry bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God. Everybody say, Thus saith the Lord God. Stand to your feet and join me to say, Dry bone, dry business, dry money. Thus saith the Lord. You are not hearing me. Everything dried in your life. Everything you want to change. Everything, every area you need a change. The Bible did not say do this. The Bible says don't only kneel down. Stay there, Gary. The Bible did not say Kneel down and survive. Bow down and struggle. But rise and shine. Say with me, from now, I will look and say, dry bones. I didn't hear you. Dry bones. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Dry bones. Dry bones. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Dry bank account. Dry bank account. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Sick body. Sick body. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Be well. Be well. Bank account. Bank account. From the east. From the east. From the west, from the north, from the south, money coming in Jesus' name. Shout hallelujah. When things when things are not 
at the place you want them to be. Don't borrow handkerchief. Dr. Faye, can I have a handkerchief? The <laughs> devil is against me. Please don't get me wrong. I believe in your ministry. I believe in the ministry of every preacher. You know me. You know my belief. God never trained us to study devil. That's right. That's right. He trained us to cast out devil. That's right. There's no preacher in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The Lord said you shall spend seven days yeah. to try demonology. Jesus said, wherever you find him, do what? In my name shall you do what? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? God said to Ezekiel, look at me, look at me. Five more minutes, you will sit down just now. Ezekiel, what do you see in the field? Son of man, how are things in your business? How are things in your health? How is the building in Delaware? How is your crusade in England? How was Maduguri? Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest. And God said, you stupid. If I didn't know, I would not ask you. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying. I'm asking you as my servant. I knew before I asked you. But I'm now asking you as my child. What are you saying to the valley of dry bone in your life? Say to it. Thus says the Lord. Oh God, look at my Bible. I don't know whether my Bible and your own are the same. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. And ye shall live. And I will lay news upon you. And we bring up flesh upon you. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. And ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So. Everyone say so. so. I didn't hear you. So. I. I. Prophesied. I. 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 Prophesied. I. As I was commanded. I. Prophesied. There is power in your mouth to change what the enemy put in your life. If thou canst only believe, then thou shalt say, Believe it. Say it. Tell your neighbor, believe it. Believe it. Okay. Believe it. And say it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Believe it. Say it. Every mountain. Thus says the Lord. Be thou. Remove. In the name of Jesus. So, say that everybody. I prophesied and said, Bones have flesh. Encounter that makes the difference. Be thou. Remove. In the name of Jesus. So, say that everybody. So, I, I prophesied and said, bones have flesh. Encounter that makes the difference is when I stop nodding my head to every situation. 
You know what I tell people, Pastor Gary? If you don't know how you feel, you feel nothing. That's right. Some people say, I don't know how I feel. I don't think I'm well. It's because you are sick. <laughs> listen, listen. God is asking me to tell somebody this morning. You are not talking enough to your situation. You are not asking God for a change. You are waiting for the next time. Ben Hinn is coming to Philadelphia. You may die before he arrives. Start to say something today. I say start to say something today. So, I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. Bone to bone. Look at verse. Look at verse 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Say unto the wind. Thus says the Lord God. Come from the, from the foul winds, O breath. From the four winds, O breath. And preach upon this slain, that they may live. So, Verse, verse 10. So, say that to everybody. So, I, prophesied I prophesied as he commanded me. He commanded me and the breath, the breath came into them. Came into and they lived they and stood up stood upon their feet. Upon feet and a sitting and see, great, great army. army. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Verse 12. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, let me tell you what I'm telling you this morning. If it's more than you can bear with your wisdom, use the name of the Lord. If the load is too heavy for you, use the name of the Lord. If your bill is piling up and your wages is going down, don't cry. Don't hide. Don't die inside. If thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that does what? Believe. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. Not who spent 14 days in tears. Right. Not who spent 21 days in hiding. Right. When you fast 21 days like I do, when you fast 7 days like I do, it's not for devil to come out. It's for you to live longer yeah. and have your closer relationship with God. Yeah. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you are going to pray 21 days before you cast out devil, he will kill you before 21 days. Right. I hope I'm making sense to you. Let me tell you what I mean. If God forbid you were cutting your if it was in Africa and you are cutting your garden and match it, cut your feet. Don't pray for seven days before you treat it. Yeah, that's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Lay hand on that feet, say, you foul spirit. I rebuke you. I command the healing. Because Jesus bled for me. I need not to bleed again. Stop in the name of Jesus. Then look for a doctor. To stitch your feet. Are you hearing me? Don't lock the door for 21 days. Because tetanus may kill you. The next three days. We are living in an era. Where the devil is no more as kind. As he used to be in the day of ignorant. The earlier you know whom you are in God. 
the better you will be today. It's time for you to start to say. Situations change. Condition change. Business change. Marriage change. Job change. Financial condition change. Head condition change. Don't shut your mouth. I said, don't shut your mouth. Don't shut your mouth. For if thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Matthew 19, 26. This may be impossible to you as a man. Not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. For there is nothing impossible with God. For with God all things are possible. Matthew 17 20. Verily I say unto you. If you have faith like the grain of mustard seed. You will not only do it. But nothing. Say with me nothing. nothing. Shall. Be impossible, impossible to me, to me who, believe. who believe. Sit down. 19 years ago, as a struggling ministry, the Lord told me when we couldn't even pay light bill and yet be able to put fuel in our single car. Buy land for university. I don't know why. Few of us, you and I, and few others. Who God forced to the ministry. Some of you came to the ministry through God's kindness. This man and myself, we are forced to the ministry. God didn't ask us, would thou come? He just said, come. (laughs) He didn't give us choice. He gave us instruction. If God has asked this man, would thou preach? He would have said, no, I'm in business. If he had asked me, Benson Idahosa, would you want to become a preacher? I've said, no one in my family have done it before. There's no need. But the good God does this. Come ye after me. He doesn't even ask you to ask your wife first. Ask any successful pastor's wife. They were never wanting to be the wife of a pastor. Because of the stress, because of the strain, because of the problem. But God never allowed the man to ask the wife first. The man just come home and tells his wife, I'm in the ministry. The wife said, I didn't marry a pastor. That's what my wife said. I don't know about your own. (laughs) Uh, near, Near it. But you know, the first seven years of my ministry, my wife says, you God called, not me. Go ahead. Now, how to control her is my problem. She now says to me, go ye, it's better than stay ye. Back to what I was saying. God, God, never ask you if you can. He just said, do it. He said, do it. 19 years ago, the Lord said to me, buy land. It's for the university. I was foolish enough to say yes. Several years, this man came to Benin. Pastor Faye came to Benin. I take them to the land. I said, let's go and see the university. Put them in the car. We drive around the whole bush. Where's the university? These trees. I said, this is university. This is university. Monkey? Yeah, university. Rubber trees? Yes, university. Palm tree? Yes, university. 
three years ago, start it. Now, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All things. If you conceive it, God will bet it. If you start it, God will finish it. If you want to buy a house, don't wait till you have all the money. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Start the negotiation tomorrow. All things are possible to him that believes. If you are believing God for a husband, don't wait till next week. Believe God for this week. For all things are possible to him that believes. If you are believing God for a car, go around tomorrow. Look for the one you desire. What things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that you shall have them and you shall receive them. Three years ago, he was one of the first people I told. That university forest, we are going to cut all the trees down. We are going to start it. How much do we have at hand? $190. How much do you need? Money every day. <laughs> if thou canst believe, how many things are possible? How many things are possible? Last year, we started the university. Last month, by the grace of God Almighty, the University of Benin granted us total affiliation because we are now a full university. Don't complain until you try it. God did not say, try me. He said, prove me. How many of you are believing God for something that you never thought you'd be able to do in your life? Stand to your feet. Come forward here. Come forward here. Pastor Faye, climb up. You know what I want to do right now? Everybody move forward. When I came in just now, as Pastor Faye, as Dr. Weston, I was unusually quiet, not like before. I spent two days asking myself, is there anything on that? Please spread, spread. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Usher, lock the door for me. I have my return ticket. If you drive me, I fly away. Shut the doors for me. Spread, spread, spread across all sides. God wants to make something happen in your life today. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. For two nights, Friday, Saturday night, I've been asking myself a question. What is that thing so hard that was never done before in the Bible? A man like you and I commanded his son to stand still. A woman like you, barren for 70 years. The Bible says, and Sarah herself believed God. And Isaac was born. There are times I need your faith. You say, my baby? Hallelujah. I thought he just asked for a baby. I've asked two of them to dismiss now, to go there. Grandchildren are coming. Put your hand to them. Say, grandchildren are coming. Grandchildren are coming. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. I'm saying amen. amen. 
And I promise Lori, I will attend her wedding next year. Not December. Shut your mouth. Seal your lips. I'm attending your wedding next year. 1997 is your year of new beginning. I tell you, that girl has paid the price of being a pastor's child. And now God is going to honor you in 97. By the grace of God. Don't take appointment before that day. Don't marry anybody before that day. From January 1st, you are qualified. Listen to me, everybody. January. From January. Yeah. Everybody say from January. January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter how much the man is in hurry, tell him your papa say from January. All right? Thou shalt slow down for God shall do it. Listen to me on a more serious note. And the father and the mother can bear witness. This year they've known me. Want to have kept our relationship, no deception, no lie. If I'm down, after telling God, I can tell it to this man. I cannot tell this one because she will cry for me. She has the gift of sympathy. But this one is going to say, Papa, I've never seen you like this before. He's going to challenge me. But this one is going to say, Lord, what? <laughs> Lord. That's why I don't tell my wife if I'm in trouble. If I'm in trouble, I don't tell my wife. When I overcome it, I tell her. You know why she will cry too much? And the Bible did not say, for by tears shall thou do all things. <laughs> the Bible did not say all things are possible to him that cry it. Right. But all things are possible to him that does what? Believe. Believe. I want to tell you why I'm here this morning. Two nights nice have asked. What has anyone from Genesis to Revelation asked him believe that God said no? What height do you say, God, I want to climb? And God said, that's ambition. Go down. How deep is the pit you find yourself? And you say, I want to come up. And God said, the place is evil. Not one. Driving from Washington to this place. Every verse I look at the Bible. With my staff that were with me. Believe. 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 God is finding it hard. To bless who doubt. It doesn't matter how many million you put in the ministry. If you don't put faith, you lose everything. That's right. Even in business. Right. If you invest money in business and you don't believe in that business, it will die. If you marry with kisses, mm, 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 you kiss her front and back and you don't believe in her, right. the marriage will die. I hope somebody is hearing what I'm saying this morning. Both in the natural and in the spiritual, God is expecting belief from us. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you what God told me at 2 o'clock this morning. He said, those things which he said shall come to pass. Say with me, those things which he said that means when I start to say it, it starts to come. I don't know whether you hear what I'm saying. Those things, those things, as many as they are, you made my day. That's my daughter, Daisy. Those things, faith, those things which he said shall come. Listen to my English. Yeah. Those things coming from here yeah. are coming from there. Who 
whosoever shall say to this mountain, whosoever shall say to this desire, whatsoever ye desire, Mark eleven twenty four. When ye pray, believe, and those things you say shall come. So what do I do when I start to pray and say, I start to open the door to my house. Why do I open the door? Because it's coming. I'm not sure you are hearing what I'm saying. Open the door of your house. Say with your mouth, the thing you desire is coming to your house. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now the question you ask me this. Idahosa, do you sometimes fear that it may not work? I do, but I don't say it. Amen. I find out that every time I talk fear, I receive fear. So what I do, when fear knock at my door, I ask Jesus to open it. When I hear fear, faith, say, Hello, is it the house are there? I say, Who is speaking? He said, My name is fear. I say, Hold on, faith is coming. Yeah. Yeah. When fear see faith, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When devil see Jesus, somebody shout hallelujah. Those pastor, help me, help me. Yeah. Mark eleven twenty four. They will hear your English. They will hear your English. Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. Listen. Do you have a desire in your life? Answer me. Do you have desires in your life? Yeah. Are there some expectations in your life? Yeah. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Therefore, I say unto you, what? Listen. 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 Say first. Is there for me? I didn't hear you. Therefore. therefore Say it with me, it's there for me. me. Say it loud, it's there for me. It's there for me. That which is there for me, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Put it back to the, put it, I now I know, know why you have been looking up since. Therefore I say unto who? You. What things, T-H-I-N-G-S, you desire when there's no desire, are you hearing me? What's your desire? Child bearing? Money in your pocket? Job for this month? What things? Not one. Do you know why many poor people don't get blessings? They ask God for peanuts. Do you know why small churches don't have more members? They're asking God for one. You know why many Christians have no money? They are singing like this. This little light of mine. Not only that the light is small, but it's their own. You, you don't understand my English. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And you are telling me, God, as your father, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. That, God said, that's selfishness. 
I ask you to light your generation. You are asking me to bless your little light. I'm not going to everything you are doing. Do you know why? You know why I cannot come here too much anytime he calls me? Two reasons. I told the wife just now. This man is an aggressive evangelist. Yet, does not lose grip of the house. That's why. As long as two of us have breath in us, nothing will break us. If you succeed outside and you fail in the house, there's no proof that you are a success. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? That's why. Oh, two years ago, when he slowed down, traveling, as faith, I said, you finish! You finish! Whatever I hear my father say I do, I say, what are you doing in Delaware? That's not your calling. Delaware is a sent fort. The wall is your parish. Yeah. Go. Yeah. And you know when he started again, oh Lord. That's my beloved son, in whom I wear please. Hear this English and fair you write it down when we get there. A pastor that is not missed by the church perish the church. At least twice a month, they must say, Welcome back. We miss you. We miss you. Don't sit down. A pastor that is not missed by the church. Perish the church. Because if you are not a go ye, you are a stay ye. And if you are a stay ye, you are a dying ye. What things soever, it doesn't matter how big you desire. Pray. Put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back. What things soever you desire. One, pray. Two, believe. Three, receive. Four, have them. How many of you have a desire? Let me tell you another song that troubled me in the church. Fill my cup, Lord. I live my cup, Lord. Come and quench the thirsty of my throat. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. If I fill your cup, how many farmers can irrigate their farm from your cup? If I leave your light as a little light shining, how many of those in darkness will see with it? So God says, or a robot that is saying, let's go. Gary Weston is going from country to country. I will bless him first. If I have any leftover that nobody needs, who is on the go, I give it to you. She said, I don't know why I'm not prospering. Number one, you are not giving. Number two, you have no desire. Not just desire, but desire things. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? What things soever you desire. When you pray, believe. And when you believe, you shall have those things which you ask God for. God sent me here. Friday and Saturday night, I have 
one of the mothers in the ministry, the director of Idahosa Wall Outreach, Washington. He asked me this morning, did you sleep? I said, no. He said, all is well. I said, yes, but no. Why? The whole night, ask them what are they in need of and what do they want to use it for? You didn't hear that. What do you want from God? If he give it to you, what will you do with it? At least, if you didn't go to school, you know what little light is. And you know what mine is. This little light of mine. So it's not our light. So I don't want you to see what it is mine. Fill my cup. It's not our cup. It's your cup. Why would God fill my cup when you are looking for ocean to feed your generation? When he told me this morning, I just came back this morning. Oh God, I said, hallelujah. Then he said to me, I'm leaving on Tuesday. Oh, go ye, welcome ye. You know what mama told him this morning? He said, they've not seen you for a week. Come and let them see that you are back. That's good news. A pastor that does not believe in going will not stop believing in dying. How many of you have ever seen a church very big that became small later? I can tell you in 144 nations, I've seen many churches full to the brim, no room inside. Yeah. But when they started petting inside, petty inside, gossip inside. Instead of gossiping the gospel, they gossip one another. And the church starts to die. Go ye. And anything you now ask God on your way out, he will give it to you on your way in. Hold your hand with your neighbor. What things soever if there is faith in your heart and the word in your mouth, God will do it. Everybody stand. It doesn't matter how sick you are, you are going to be well now. It doesn't matter how bad you are, you are going to be loose now. And when we finish, go to my book table, ask off. Knowing what to say, I have to say it. Pencil in God's hand. God's back to ask. Go for miracle books and tapes. And from today, begin to say, for all things are possible to him that believe. Say after me, my dear Father in heaven, I remove all my limitations. From this day, I will speak your word. I will believe in your word. I will stand by my testimony. All things are possible to him that believes. From now, From now, I confess, I, confess, I, can, do I can do all things, all things through, Christ through Christ that energize me. Yes.